Hey guys, today I'll be building another gaming PC and it will be inside the Corsair 4000D Airflow, which is a pretty compact mid-tower case. In fact, I would say it's a pretty solid ATX mid-tower case if you're in the market for one. And the build will revolve around a 12900K and a 3080 Ti, and I'll talk about the build process as we walk through it and also cover the temperatures as well. So let's dive in. This project is for a client who wants a gaming and streaming PC that is custom water-cooled and also glows in the dark. He's got a dedicated entertainment room that has black lights installed with painted murals of video game and anime characters on the walls, which are UV reactive. So we took that concept and applied it to this build to make it fit the theme. Starting with core components, normally if it's just for gaming, I would have gone with a 12700K for best value from Intel's 12th gen, but I figured a 12900K with extra cores would be more helpful with streaming. The GPU is the RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition, which will be going into the Corsair Hydro X XG7 water block. I really like the PCB from the Founders Edition 30 series cards. They are shorter in length compared to their AIB partnered cards and can fit into smaller builds. The nice thing about Corsair water blocks is that the thermal pads and paste do come pre-installed. However, for thermal paste, I always prefer to use my own manual application with Noctua's NTH1, NTH2, or Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut like in this case. Motherboard will be the MSI Z690 Tomahawk. The Tomahawk models have a history of being a really good value board in general with a pretty clean aesthetics, nothing too crazy or fancy. Personal style, I typically always want the motherboard to be as simple looking as possible, usually avoiding RGB. Populating the storage will be two sticks of 2TB Samsung 980 Pros, which should give enough space for games and media. Now for me, it's common practice to first fill the motherboard with everything including the CPU water block, like this Hydro X XC7 from Corsair. The RAM modules are DDR4 and we are going with 32GB of Corsair Vengeance clocked at 3200MHz CL16. The rest of the cooling solution in the system is Corsair's Hydro X line for the most part such as the XD5 pump and reservoir combo, the XR7 240mm radiator that has a thickness of 55mm, and with 6 QL120 RGB fans. The fans are pretty much going to be all connected and controlled by Corsair's Commander Core XT to keep everything within the IQ software for the user's convenience. The 4000D Airflow is a nice straightforward case to build in. This build will have 3 intake fans on the front, two exhaust fans on the top with the radiator, and one exhaust fan in the back of the case. I'm also going with a vertical GPU mount in this build to showcase the front side of the water block. So originally, I was going to go with the Corsair 5000D Airflow case, but I decided the 4000D was a better choice for this project. There were two things I wanted to accomplish in this build. One was I wanted a smaller case. I felt like the 5000D was too big. And two, I wanted to use a thick radiator in the top mount as exhaust. The 5000D can only top mount standard sized or slimmer radiators like the Corsair XR5, which is around 30 millimeters. The XR7 that I'm using is much thicker at 55 millimeters and doesn't clear the top mount in the 5000D, especially when ATX sized motherboards and RAM modules have tall heat sinks. The 4000D does have this clearance on the top panel, but the downside is that it cannot fit a 360mm radiator, which is what I wanted. However, in my thermal testing discussed later on, I will show you that a thick 240mm radiator is enough to keep a 12900K and a 3080 Ti running just fine under load in a single custom water loop. Powering the entire system is the Corsair RMX 850W power supply with custom green cables from CableMod as I'm doing a black and green themed build. The neat thing about these cables is that they are UV reactive, and the QL fans also so happen to have a similar effect as well and you can see it when the lights are turned off. This will basically match the aesthetics of the gaming room it's going into. The 14mm tubes will be Corsair's acrylic satin transparent tubes, giving the coolant that unique frosted look. Fittings are all black to keep it consistent with the themed colors, now, there are a couple spots where I had to use bits power extenders and offset fittings to straighten out some tube runs because currently Corsair does not have these components, or at least not yet. Just to top it off aesthetically, I did replace some of the stock black thumb screws with green ones to give it something extra. Now for the temperatures, I've tested the system at two different fan speeds under load, 1200 RPM and 1500 RPM. 
CPU is overclocked to 5.0 GHz at 1.32 volts, RAM with XMP profile running at 3200 MHz and 1.35 volts. The GPU is left at stock because I felt that might be pushing the 240 mm radiator as the power draw demand was much higher while only providing an extra 5 to 7 FPS at most on the games that the client normally plays. However, I will say that looking at the temperatures, there is actually still room for GPU overclocking if desired. At 1200 RPM under load during gaming, the CPU floats in the mid 60 degrees for the most part and GPU at around 70 degrees. At 1500 RPM, the delta drops about 3.5 degrees bringing the CPU down closer to 60 to 61 and the GPU down to about 67. So there is actually plenty of room for more overclocking. 1200 RPM is the default I've set the system to for a good balance of temperature and noise. During light loads and normal operations, the fans can run even at 1000 RPM for a quieter system if need be. Another thing to mention is that I've removed the dust filter off the top panel here since it does actually impede the hot air being exhausted, which I found is and can be a 4 degrees delta in this case. The perforations on the dust filter are actually quite small compared to the fan grill mesh built into the top panel of the 4000D case. Additionally, my room temperature is typically set to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is considered a bit more warmer than what most people have. It's just what I'm comfortable with, but I believe most people set it to 70 to 72 degrees. With that in mind, there is definitely room for lower system temps if someone were to run their AC lower than mine. Overall, I really enjoyed building this gaming system. I wanted a compact ATX case. I wanted the airflow to go in certain directions. I wanted the PC to glow in the dark and also have RGB lighting when desired. I also wanted the tube runs to look very clean and simple. Everything I set out to do was accomplished. So that's it for this video. Parts list will be down in the description. Let me know what you think of this build via comments and I really appreciate your time watching my video here as always. I'll catch you next time. Peace.